Juan Luis Lagunos Rosales was a 17-year-old from Mexico who had achieved internet fame and envy-inducing notoriety from his viral social media videos depicting his hard-partying lifestyle. With no paternal influence and his mother absent for most of his upbringing, Juan eventually dropped out of school at 15 and left his hometown to start a new life on his own terms. After settling in the city of Culiacan, his risky videos showcasing binge drinking sessions earned him the nickname El Pirata de Culiacan, as well as over a million social media followers. As his popularity grew, so did his age and appropriate behavior. Juan's unrestricted consumption of alcohol and drugs, accessorizing with weapons, and overall pretense of being untouchable would ultimately catch up with him following an insolent video targeting a ruthless cartel boss. His ensuing death would cut short a bright youth full of potential in a cautionary tale about the perils of social media fame and power dynamics in Mexico. Born in Navalado, Sinaloa, Juan came from a broken family, never knowing his father and eventually abandoned by his mother as a young boy, leaving him in the care of his maternal grandmother. Though she tried to provide Juan with the basic necessities, life with his grandmother was far from ideal. Juan ended up dropping out of school at the age of 15 and set off on his own to the nearby city of Culiacan, where he supported himself washing cars. Lacking maturity and supervision, Juan was highly impressionable to Culiacan's rampant vices. He started dabbling in drinking at parties to gain acceptance, but what began as typical teenage rebellion soon spiraled out of control into intense binges. Juan often drank entire bottles of liquor in one night, posting his exploits online for all the world to see. In December 2016, one particular video showcasing an exceptionally intoxicated Juan went viral. The footage depicted him chugging a bottle of vodka until passing out, earning significant views and attention beyond just his existing social media network. This initial taste of internet fame marked a turning point for Juan, who began actively trying to expand his online follower count through similarly outrageous drinking videos. These videos proved to be successful clickbait. The more outrageous footage he posted of his underage drunken escapades, the more followers flocked to his social media pages. Within a year, his fan base grew exponentially to hundreds of thousands on Instagram and over one million on Facebook. People simply couldn't get enough of the reckless teenager consuming copious amounts of liquor and acting the fool. The more attention his binge drinking received online, the further Juan took things in a dangerous bid to increase his popularity. It became a perilous cycle. The public would cheer on his extreme behavior, while Juan chased that celebrity high by upping the ante, too drunk and cocksure to quit. To continue growing his brand, he adopted the fitting nickname El Pirata de Culiacan, which translates to the Pirate of Culiacan. This new nickname definitely matched his online persona, and views just kept increasing. Despite only being 16 at the time, Juan had no qualms about openly broadcasting his excessive underage drinking, defying Mexico's legal drinking age of 18. He made no attempts to conceal his illegal behavior, even drawing attention to it. Juan taunted commenters who called him out for his age by proudly flaunting fake mustaches and prominent tattoos of a pirate and tiger, daring symbols of adolescent rebellion. As Juan's binge drinking footage continued circulating online without backlash, he wrongly assumed his internet celebrity status made him immune to real repercussions. But his recklessness finally caught up to him in the summer of 2017, when he was arrested for underage public intoxication. Many thought that this would be a wake-up call for Juan, and that he may finally face meaningful justice. But it seemed that the police simply brushed away his crimes, diminishing any hopes for accountability. Juan was released after just a short detention, facing no serious repercussions yet again. This only further emboldened Juan's burgeoning belief in his invincibility, yet it would be this inflated self-assurance and unrepentant commitment to his reckless image that would ultimately lead him into a path of even greater danger. In December 2017, fresh off yet another weekend spent carousing with questionable company twice his age, a clearly inebriated Juan took to social media with an even more outrageous idea. He decided to openly send a confrontational message mocking notorious cartel kingpin Nemesio Oseguera, better known as El Mencho, whose ruthless Jalisco New Generation cartel exerted iron-fisted control throughout Culiacan. Spewing curses into the camera with drink-flushed cheeks, Juan addressed the notorious crime lord directly, 
arrogantly proclaiming El Mencho, a mi me pela la verga, a phrase which loosely translates to El Mencho can suck my d- Perhaps a sober person may have thought twice before daring to publicly mock a violent gang leader, but Juan saw this stunt as a ticket to even more views and fame. The stupid drunk stunt lasted barely a minute, but the sobering consequences would last a lifetime. Juan had drastically misjudged both his own untouchability and as well as El Mencho's propensity for violence. While Juan's viral rise took place in a relatively short span of years, the formidable gang lord he dared to taunt had spent decades methodically rising to power. Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, known widely as El Mencho, began his career in the 1980s as a police officer in the Mexican state of Michoacán. But he had actually grown up poor in a small village in Jalisco, the same state where Juan Luis would meet his end. El Mencho quickly realized that honest money was much harder to come by, so he decided to switch to the dark side and join the Millennio Cartel, in search of fortune. He quickly worked himself up the ranks, but when the top leaders of Millennio were killed off by rival gangs, El Mencho broke ranks in 2010 to form his ruthless syndicate, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. Through intimidation tactics and savvy maneuvers, he transformed CJ Yang into one of Mexico's newest yet most dangerously efficient cartels. With expansive contacts in Asia and Europe developed from his early career working with other organized crime outfits, El Mencho gradually crafted CJ Yang into Mexico's leading exporter of methamphetamines and fentanyl. Not only was CJ Yang known for its illegal drug trade, but its rapid rise was marked by unspeakable violence, including publicly hanging mutilated bodies from bridges or dumping severed heads in front of government buildings. Police convoys were ambushed and footage of vicious torture sessions circulated as both intimidation and recruiting tactics. As El Mencho's empire and list of atrocities grew, both the United States and Mexico took notice. Seeking to dismantle his vast criminal network flooding illegal substances across borders, the U.S. State Department offered an unprecedented $10 million reward in 2018 for information leading to his arrest. But with his wide financial resources and alleged political protection, El Mencho remained at large. A major crackdown on a dangerous cartel that has hubs in L.A. and across the U.S. Eyewitness News reporter Rob Hayes joins us now live in our newsroom with more. Rob? Yeah, the cartel de Jalisco Nueva Generación, the CJNG, is one of the most dangerous criminal organizations in the world. It should have been abundantly clear to anyone with even the most basic grasp of the situation that El Mencho wasn't someone to be messed with. Yet Juan made the fateful mistake of directly insulting the ruthless cartel boss gravely underestimating who he was provoking. Taunting El Mench was Juan's first big mistake, yet it wouldn't be his last. Scarcely few weeks later in December 2017, Juan made another reckless decision that would cost him his life. Still reveling in the attention and controversy sparked by his El Mencho video, Juan was out again partying and drinking up a storm. Caught up in the moment, he logged in online and posted to his followers the name of the bar and city where he was currently at. He assumed that thousands of his fans would come to the bar and continue the festivities with him, but what he didn't know was that he ultimately issues his own death warrant the moment he clicked share location on that post. Within a few hours of making the post, a group of armed men abruptly stormed into the bar in Chalisco where Juan was partying with his friends. Screams and breaking glass pierced through the blaring music as the gang swiftly made their way to Juan's table. Without a word, they unleashed a barrage of bullets that struck Juan over 15 times at point-blank range, killing him on the scene. When Culiacan police arrived to process the grisly scene, they initially had difficulty identifying the body and were only able to confirm that it was Juan Luis due to his distinguishing tattoos. They also found the body of a 25-year-old bar worker who appeared to be hit by a stray bullet, but it was clear Juan had been the sole target of the attack. With little immediate evidence beyond the CCTV footage, police wrote off the crime as probable gang retaliation due to the video Juan posted only weeks earlier. They suspected that the CJ Yang was responsible for the murder, yet no arrests have been made. With Mexico facing a swelling homicide epidemic, law enforcement ultimately deemed the murder as self-inflicted by Juan embracing narco culture and taunting dangerous gangsters. 
The dramatic case soon faded quietly into cold stacks of incident reports once public fascination moved on. And the cartel enforcers evaporated as swiftly as they struck, protected by special interests and deep pockets.